The process of digestion starts in the mouth itself. The food is taken in by the process of ingestion, and there in mouth a mechanical breakdown of food is done by the teeth. Parotid, submandibular and sublingual, all three salivary glands adds up to saliva and tongue mixes the saliva with food. So before moving forward let's have a look on some points about our saliva. Saliva have a pH of 6.8 and released up to 1.5 liter per day. Saliva is 99.5% of water, mucus, and rest 0.5% is solutes. These solutes have ions like sodium, potassium, chlorine, bicarbonates, phosphates etc. Saliva also contains antibacterials like lysozyme enzyme, tyrosinide and IgA antibody. Saliva also contains digestive enzymes like salivary amylase, thiolin, which breaks starch, polysaccharides, into maltose, disaccharide, and lingolipase breaks fat to fatty acids. Now coming back to process of digestion, after mechanical breakdown the food, and added with saliva, it is known as, as bolus, bolus then passes to pharynx, and then in esophagus the epiglottis prevents its entry in the windpipe, the peristaltic movements which are controlled by the autonomic nervous system, pushes the bolus to the stomach, stomach have four main regions that are cardiac, fundus, body, and pyloric. When bolus enter in the stomach, the gastroesophageal sphincter, also known as cardiac sphincter, prevents the backflow of stomach contents. Here in stomach the food is mixed with the gastric juices. Gastric juices have phone, 1, 5 to 2, and are secreted up to 2-3 liters per day by the gastric glands present in the stomach. Mainly there are 4 glands in stomach. They are first mucus neck cells. They secrete 1 to 3 millimeters thick layer of mucus which prevents the stomach from the action of hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. Second is periacloroxintic cells. They secrete hydrochloric acid and castles into rancic factor, CIF. HCL maintains the acidic pH which is necessary to convert ferric to ferrous. This ferrous is used in formation of hemoglobin. If HCL is absent, leads to deficiency of ferrous which further leads to microcytic anemia. The castles into rancic factor is responsible for absorption of vitamin B12 which is necessary for RBC maturation. Absence of CIF leads to macrocytic pernicious anemia. The third component of gastric juice is G4-zymogen or peptic cells. They secrete gastric lipase, which works with bile juice only, and zymogens, that is pepsinogen and proronin. Zymogens gets activated to pepsin and reninothymosin in presence of hydrochloric acid, and the breaks down proteins to peptones, proteoses, and to peptides. After all these the acidic food formed is known as chyme. The churning movements made by the longitudinal, circular, and oblique muscles mixes the food properly with the digestive juices. Food then passes pyloric sphincter and reaches 6 to 7 meters long small intestine. It possesses three main regions that are duodenum, jejunum, and ileum. Many more juices get mixed with the food in the duodenum. Let's have a brief look on them. The acidic food is neutralized in duodenum with the help of bile juice secreted by the liver. Bile juice does not contain any enzyme. It's 95% water and rest 5% is cholesterol, lecithin, bile pigments that is bilirubin and bilevudin and bile salts. After neutralization, alkaline pancreatic juice is added to the food released from the duct of Santorini and duct of Wursung. The alkaline food present in intestine is known as chyle. Pancreatic juice is also known as complete digestive juice. Because it digests everything present in food, it contains trypsinogen, which gets activated to trypsin in presence of enterokinase present in intestinal juice. Trypsin then further activates chimotrypsinogen and procarboxypeptidase to chimotrypsin and carboxypeptidase. These three breaks proteins, peptones, and proteases, simultaneously into peptones, proteoses, and peptides. Pancreatic juice or pancreatic amylase known as amylopsin, which breaks starch to maltose. Nuclease to break down nucleic acids like DNA and RNA into nucleotides, and pancreatic lipase emulsifies triglycerides that is fats into diglycerides, monoglycerides, and fatty acids. After pancreatic juice, the intestinal juice, or succus entericus, is also added to the food which is released from the Brunner's gland, which is present on outer lining of duodenum, and crypt of Liebkuchen, which is present as mucosal layer of whole small intestine, comma, and you have cells like goblet cells, which release mucus, panath cells, which release lysozyme, enzyme and hormone releasing cells, and argentafin cells, which releases serotonin which cause contractions in gut. Intestinal juice contains enterokinase, endorepsins, that is aminopeptidase, and apeptidase, which breaks down peptones and proteoses to depeptides and depeptides to amino acids simultaneously. Intestinal juice have maltase, lactase, and sucrase, to break down maltose, lactose, and sucrose, simultaneously into glucose, galactose, and fructose. Intestinal juice have nucleotidase, and nucleosidase, 
to break nucleotides into nucleosides and nucleosides into sugars and nitrogenous base, and for complete emulsification of fats the intestinal juice have intestinal lipase to break deglycerides, monoglycerides, and fatty acids, into monoglycerides, glycerol, fatty acids, and bile salts and these further forms micelles to get absorbed. This emulsified fats first get absorbed by the gut epithelial cells, and then in those epithelial cells they combine with the chilomicron, and then get absorbed in the lymphatic capillary. Our body actually needs triglycerides, but it is broken down more to get absorbed because it cannot be absorbed directly. Maximum absorption occurs in the jejunum and ileum regions of the small intestine, but most of drugs and alcohols gets quickly absorbed in mouth and stomach itself. After absorption the food enter into the large intestine, where nothing much happens just the symbiotic microorganisms present in blind sacochecum forms. Vitamin K and B and maintains local immunity. Colon region have longitudinal and circular muscles to push the waste forward and then the undigested mass is excreted out through anus. Thank you.